There we go. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today in conversation with Adam Davey, Director of Patarum Solutions and Patarum Local, specialist in HR projects and consultancy. As I've often heard you say, Adam, you're a preventer of people problems. So tell me about that, Adam. Well, preventing people problems, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those nice uh, uh, networking intros, Mark. I'm not sure who told me the value of that, but somebody, somebody I know well know. But uh, I think really it kind of sums up what I'm about and what Patorum are about. Uh, we'd much rather work with uh, clients proactively to try and prevent people problems and get all the right uh, kind of pieces of the jigsaw in place rather than trying to sweep up and deal with uh, you know, a potential mess or a difficult situation once a problem's arisen. So, you know, it's a lot more constructive and a lot more positive to try and prevent things, in my opinion. Very good. So, thank you. So, you know, I, I introduced you with sort of Patarum Solutions and Patarum Local. What, what's the difference then? What, what's, what's the focus for Patarum Solutions? So, I think really, Mark, um, where where we started off the business um, eight years ago, um, we, Mark uh, Dyer, who's my business partner and I, had come out of um, kind of a, I suppose, a corporate life. Um, we'd worked in large organisations um, and our professional networks, when we first set the business up, were very much still in that world. Um, you know, large organisations um, often had large HR teams. Um, and that was our natural focus to begin with, Mark. Um, we continued to work with the people that we had in our network. Um, we worked on large scale change projects, HR transformation projects, as part of a project team working within another business. Um, and the Patorum Solutions brand is very much still focused around consultancy, transformation, and HR projects. So um, I think we often say we either provide additional capacity to a business that has got an, its existing HR team, or we might provide additional capability if they don't have a particular set of skills or experiences that we have that they need for a particular piece of work or project. Victorum Local is very much around working with um, small and medium sized businesses. Um, I'll focus our target market is very much around working with local businesses because that's what we want to do we want to be part of the local business community um, and really um, the essence there is about providing straightforward HR advice and support you know it's taking the complexity out of HR um, it's really giving the advice and the support in simple terms and helping those businesses uh, achieve their objectives in a much more simple and straightforward way. So I think that's it in a nutshell, really. Yeah, very good. That's, that's really interesting. And I know that the Patarum local solution really has been a relatively new innovation for you in, only in the last few months or so, really. Yes, I think it was um, autumn, winter last year when the kind of little seed that had been at the back of our minds for some time um, really started to... Uh, you know, come into being and, and, and spring some life. Um, and we really started to think about how we could take our experiences of working with different type of organisation and really hone that into uh, an offering and a service that would help smaller organisations too. Um, you know, it's a bit like... Um, flying an aeroplane, I guess would be a good analogy. You know, if you're flying uh, a great big, you know, Airbus or, you know, A380, whatever those enormous things are, you know, if you fly that, you're called a pilot. If you fly a little two-seater propeller um, aircraft, you're called a pilot. But the skill set and the context of being a pilot in those two situations is completely different. Mm. And it's like that in the HR world you know the requirements of very large organizations PLCs whatever whatever they are you know our, our largest client had 29,000 employees our smallest client has one you know so we've got a real um, divergence in terms of the spectrum of uh, employee numbers um, and it's it's a different type of HR 
advice, Mark, yeah. HR service that, that we deliver. So to say HR is HR is HR, <coughs> excuse me, you know, um, I, don't, I don't believe that's true. You know, uh, I think it's about really working with the business, understand what it is they need, and then utilising, you know, our skills and experiences to deliver that to them in, in the best way. Yeah, fascinating stuff, isn't it? You know, I'm pleased to have been part of your journey on that, uh, on that, uh, well, on that journey. Um, yeah. You've been in HR a long time, haven't you now? And, uh, you know, I'm perhaps quite interested to, and perhaps our, our listeners are quite interested to hear about what, um, what you got, what got you started in HR? Well, I think probably what got me started in HR was um, just an opportunity. Um, you know, I, I was working um, in an office, you know, general office duties, saw um, uh, a role advertised in HR, thought that looks kind of interesting. I'll give that a go. Um, and it went from there, really, Mark. Um, you know, from there, I uh, got the opportunity to continue my studies. So um, it was the, the professional body was called the Institute of Personnel Management back then. And that was before the days of HR. <laughs> so quite how old I am. Um, so, you know, I, um, I studied for my professional qualification um, and I was looking enough to do that um, fairly close by at Doncaster, which was uh, you know, a, a well reputed um, study centre for the uh, Institute. Um, got my professional qualification and, and, and really went on from there. But um, I think the, the point of my career where, where it really changed was around 1999, 2000. Um, and I was actually working in a local authority at the time, part of their HR team, and they decided to outsource their, um, all of their support services to a private sector organisation. Um, and that was um, my first experience of Tupi. So I was uh, part of the Tupi transfer. So I went through the process, um, actually got involved in, in helping ensure that process uh, ran smoothly from the client's point of view. Uh, when I Tupi transferred, the, the private organisation that I transferred to kind of said to me, look, you can go back doing the day job you were doing before, or you can come and work as part of our central HR team and and they were a really kind of entrepreneurial exciting business um, so I supported them with their strategic so difficult to say strategic sales activity so I was the HR expert I suppose helping them with their sales activity and when they won a, a bid um, help to support the cheapy transfer of staff from other organizations into the company um, and it was a really exciting time, you know, it was dynamic, um, uh, you know, uh, it was it was really rewarding. Um, and at that period in time, um, it was quite cutting edge within the sector that I was working in. <clears throat> so, um, you know, gained, gained a huge amount of experience really quickly. And that really led on to um, to my kind of future career. You know, I was looking lucky enough to work with an HR director at that time that kind of saw something in me, believed in me and gave me some opportunities. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's been a different type of HR, you know, than um, perhaps lots of people would see as the norm. Um, you know, very often people think, well, HR isn't that about recruitment or, um, you know, maternity or um, sacking people or, dis, you know, disciplinaries and, you know, that kind of real nuts and bolts type of end of HR. <laughs> a lot of my career was very much project based. You know, it was, you know, it was about, you know, I think we, we were transferring under Tupi, you know, a thousand people at the time from one organisation to another with a whole. Yeah, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but there's a certain, you know, kind of, uh, range of activity that you do whether you're dealing with one pe person or a thousand you know it's just the scale and the complexity that gets yeah, I was going to ask you about that actually you know when you're looking at doing the Pataram solutions where you're doing the bigger project stuff whether you're doing you know when you're doing the Pataram local work you know I, I wondered actually what um, what the differences were in terms of the scale you know I know the scope of the project I get the scope of the project is going to be very different 
but I just wonder, you know, as you were alluding to there, where, where the differences might lie. Yeah, well, I think it, it's always about context, Mark. You know, and in, in a large organisation, you've normally got a number of tiers that, that you're dealing with. So communication and engagement requires more planning than a very small business where perhaps you all sit in the same office. You know, um, communication's a heck of a lot easier then, isn't it? You know, um, so I think it, it's about context and scale. Um, you know, and and the complexity, you know, is 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 a big issue. Um, larger organisations have additional requirements and obligations based on them as well, um, but they also have more resources at their disposal. Mark, so you know, going to um, uh, an SME business with you know an all singing, all dancing, gold plated Rolls Royce type of solution, you know that you that may be appropriate for a large PLC. You know, I'm sure the MD would just look at me like I've gone completely and utterly mad, you know, because it just wouldn't sit within the context of that business and they wouldn't recognise, I'm sure, the, um, the the value of the type of investment that they'd be asked to make. You yeah. Know? yeah. For a very large business, it's just a different, um, uh, it's a different... Different sort of process, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 What's... Uh, um... What gives you the most satisfaction then, you know, when you're working with the smaller businesses, you know, what, what sort of gives you the most satisfaction when you're working with clients? Absolutely. It's about the more direct link between um, our intervention and the end result. You know, smaller, um, smaller machines are easier to, they're, they're more agile. So, you know, if you make a tweak at one end in a smaller machine or organisation, it's very quick to get that the the change or the impact of what you've done to the other end. So it's a lot more visible. It's a lot more agile, you know. And if you're talking about performance or, you know, something that will drive the engagement or the performance of a team, you know, doing that in a team of five people is a lot quicker than doing it in a team of fifty or five hundred. Yeah. Um, you know. So I think. Um, you know, for sure, you know, some of the larger projects are hugely rewarding, you know, simply because of the uh, nature of them and the size and scale of them. And, you know, um, they're, they're nice projects to work on. Mm. But for that, um, you know, more immediate result, you know, I always get, you know, a satisfaction when I cut my grass because I can see the net effect of, of my hard work. You know, there are nice stripes on the lawn and it looks nice, you know, and in a way, that's an analogy that I can relate to. You know, it's seeing the impact of your um, effort more quickly. Um, and I think particularly when that relates to people, because if you can get people in a team who are galvanised, um, they're all very much uh, working towards the same common purpose, a uh, common set of goals, and they're trying to achieve the same thing, you know, that's a really rewarding environment to work in. You know, and if you can get that level of um, engagement, you know, and and the team is well looked after, you know, and, and, and their well-being matters, you know, that's a really, really powerful combination for any team or business. Yeah. You know, that will, in, in, in my belief, you know, truly drive better performance and productivity. So yeah. do you think the, um, it's all about. Do you think the business itself needs to have clear that you know needs to have their aims set out in a clear way because as you say if you're building team and you're building culture and you're managing that that within an organization you know does it have much effect you know if you have you found that we when working with businesses of different sizes you know if there's no the business doesn't have clear aims or the goals are not clear more importantly you know my passion in terms of actually are you communicating your aims and goals um to the rest of your team yeah absolutely you know if if you're setting um, five people off on an ex expedition and you tell them the objective is to travel 50 miles from the point they're at, one may go north, two may go south, one east, one west. You know, if you tell them all that the objective is to travel 50 miles north, they're all heading in, in the same direction and the, the um, impact of, you know, everybody pulling together, heading in the same direction, you know, is is really significant, Mark. Mm. Uh, just aligning 
you know, everybody to that common purpose because then all the little conversations and all the little rabbit holes that you sometimes might get, you know, um, uh, buried in or distracted by, um, you know, they become less relevant because actually the, the eye is on, you know, this is the direction that we're heading, you know. So I think it's, it, it's really, really important to have that kind of clear purpose, you know, common set of goals, and also really important to have a common set of values. Um, you know, values drive behaviour, behaviour drives culture. Um, and if anybody's ever worked in a team or, or an organisation where the culture isn't right, boy, do you know about it, you know, and that can have a dramatic effect on performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, sometimes some of these things, um, you know, get referred to as, oh, you know, that's the soft side of HR or it's um, pink and fluffy or, you know, whatever, you know, particular term somebody might choose to use. But, you know, I, I dispute it, you know, genuinely and passionately dispute it. You know, it's, it's that stuff that really drives performance in a way, you know, that, um, you know, is, 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 is so significant. You know, of course, you can have a successful team without that, but you add that in as another ingredient and and see the difference. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And and as you can imagine, and I see I see a lot of the uh, the values and goals and aims in organisations, and then you know perhaps be able to filter down through their team as well. So yeah, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting uh, um, interesting analogy that happens in organisations. It? it just occurred to me there when we were talking talking about piloting an aeroplane. You know, if you're in, if you're in a smaller organisation, you perhaps can, you know, you can adjust and pivot quite quickly. But if you're flying one of those big jumbo jet things, you know, it takes a little bit longer. It's a bit like steering an oil tanker, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it is absolutely. And yeah, that's dead right. You know, it takes a lot more organisation and planning and system and process to get that right because you've got to think much earlier. Okay, we we we're going to need to navigate and turn that corner in six miles time. You need to start planning ahead. Whereas a small organization, actually we need to do it in five minutes time. You know, it's, it's more agile. It's more nimble. Yeah. And I guess that's a perfect example of why you've now got the two sides of the business now, because it allows you to help those, those um, different size organizations really effectively. Yeah. And, and, and I think also, Mark, we, we need to communicate what we do in quite a different way. Um, you know, and communicating in a Batorum Solutions style language to everybody um, means that, you know, actually it will resonate and uh, be understood by those people associated with bigger organisations. But for those in smaller organisations, they may be thinking, crikey, this seems really irrelevant to what we do. Yeah. And, and vice versa. So I think, you know, um, uh, a wise man wants... Um, taught me the importance of being very clear on on your target market and um, you know um, I don't know who that was um, <laughs> uh, but you know it, it was really out of that conversation that the solutions and local propositions were yeah. born I think Mark um, so you know it was a it was a particularly valuable conversation that afternoon I, I, I still remember it distinctly good good so that sort of leads me on to another question, really. You know, th there's a lot going on in our world at the moment. And um, obviously, we're recording this this conversation. So, I, you know, people are going to be watching it at all sorts of different times. You know, but where we are, what, what sort of mid-June 2020 now at the moment, um, you know, there's all sorts of things going on, on in our world. Um, and I just wonder, you know, is there one sort of thing that you can put your finger on in the last 12 months and say, do you know what, that is a massive lesson learned or that's a massive light bulb moment or that's a, a really important sort of pivotal point in the in the growth of your organization in in the growth of the organization i think really it's been about uh the point at which we 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 got clarity of our target markets mark you know and the fact that um you know we were more thoughtful uh, about who might be interested in what we do. So, um, you know, it relates back to the conversation you and I had about target market. And, you know, my, my view, is, as you know, used to be, well, we deliver HR, HR applies to any business that 
um, you know, employs other staff. Um, and therefore, any business that employs somebody will be a potential customer for us. And at the most basic level, I guess that that is still true. Um, but actually, it's very much values based. I mean, we talked about values within teams, but 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 there's there's a values base that sits behind the business as well. You know, and I think for us, um, you know, we we very much like to work with those organisations that truly value the um, the contributions that their people make, and they see their their, their teams at, at the heart of the success of the business. Um, and I suppose if people don't share those values, then they're highly unlikely to be interested in anything that we can offer, because you know, other than perhaps ticking an odd uh, legal compliance box, you know, uh, that they may still may or may not still be interested in. Um, but it's really, it was that point of understanding, uh, you know, there is an audience out there that think the same as we do. We don't all think the same, which is a good thing, you know, um, and, and there's room for everybody because actually we, we you know, whether it's business, um, socially, whatever the um, uh, context and, and scenario, we tend to attract and be attracted to people who share our values don't we yeah, um, absolutely and, and actually you know we we try and drive our our brand our communication our marketing and everything we do from from a values based um kind of starting point um and i think that was um you know absolutely a light bulb moment um you know and 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 that was the catalyst for you know uh, a journey that we've really been on since last autumn mm. yeah very good very good. So, um, sort of just moving on then, really a little bit. Um, you know, if you're thinking about, you, you know, the, the experiences that you've had in HR and the journey that you've had, you know, and th there are a number of businesses and people that are studying HR at the moment, and they're perhaps undertaking some learning and education. You know, if you had like one top tip, or or somebody that's thinking about embarking in a in a career in HR, what what do you think that might be? Um, I think for me, the, that there is always a, a, a challenge with um, uh, functions such as HR because, you know, we don't, you know, if, if we are uh, part of another business, so an HR function is in, in a business is an overhead function, isn't it? You know, it doesn't, doesn't drive revenue, um, you know, it, it costs money to, to have um an HR function in the business. So, you know, my my big passion, and, and you know, it's the thing that I would say, you know, to anybody uh, studying HR is, you know, to keep asking the so what question. I'm in HR, so what? 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 Why does that matter? You know, why is it important? And what value can you add to the organisation that you're working in? Because if you're not adding value, you know. Um, it's probably going to be a fairly short-lived relationship for a start. And actually it's going to be a lot less enjoyable than if you are really adding value. Um, you know, I think there is a, uh, there is a very old fashioned version of HR, which is, uh, you know, I suppose I call it the HR policing role, uh, which is about, you know, looking after the rules and the regulations and telling people what they can't do. Um, but that's really not, not my view of, of a modern style of HR. Yes, of course, rules are important because they set expectations. Yes, of course, regulations are and, and the law is important because you can land yourself in an awful lot of hot water. Mm. But that's not what it's all about. You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, HR is the custodian of, of, of the people within the business. You know, so if a business is reliant on people to deliver its product or service, um, you know, it's so important to work out, you know, to be really, really commercially focused about this. How can we maximise the investment that we're making in our people? Businesses make a huge investment in their workforce. Salaries, recruitment costs, on costs, pension, benefits, training, induction, you know, it goes on and on and on, you know, and it's, and it's not a short term investment, you know, it's an ongoing year on year investment in people. Mm. And, you know, I think 
there aren't many FDs that would buy a multi-million pound machine and um, not want to have a, uh, a business case that demonstrated a return on that investment. They would want that machine to work for them mm. and to deliver to their business requirements. Um, you know, and of course, uh, it, it's it's too mechanistic to, to treat people as a machine. I'm not advocating that at all. But you know, people need to feel engaged. You know, we do need looking after. We all need a little bit of stroking here, here and there. You know, and doing those things isn't soft and soppy and just being nice for the sake of it. You know, it's about getting your people in the best possible place with all the obstacles removed, so that they can deliver the best performance they possibly can consistently, you know? Yeah. Um, and for me, that is a passion that, that drives me and drives our organization. Um, we, you know, we're not in the, you know, we're gonna tell you what you can't do school, you know, occasionally we have to, uh, but we'll do that in the, in the sense of these are the risks, you know, okay, so you perhaps want to do something a bit silly, your choice, these are the risks. Yeah. Actually, let's think about a different solution, a different way to achieve what you want to achieve. Mm. So rather than just saying no, we actually give some give some alternatives. So now the best advice, really, then you you say is you know for for somebody that's starting out on the journey is to say actually you know decide what you're doing this for, and if you're doing it for the right reasons, and you know, you know yeah. you're aiming to work with the people that that share your passion for looking after people and supporting people just actually brought me to mind of one of Richard Branson's quotes, isn't it? You know, look after your staff and your staff will look after your customers. Because if Absolutely. you think customer service is first, you're, you're doing it the wrong way around, you know, it's yes. actually the yeah. wrong way around. And, 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 you know, the other key thing for HR people is understand the business and, or understand the organization you're working in. If you don't understand the organization and, and, and how it operates and what the levers and drivers of success are, then you can't possibly give the best advice so, you know, immerse yourself in the business, get it, roll your sleeves up, get into the business, really understand it. And then the advice that you give will be so much more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. So um, as we bring the conversation to a close, um, just quickly, can I ask Adam, you know, if somebody wants to reach out to you, if they want to get in contact with you, what's, what's the best thing to, to do to reach out to you? I guess you've got a website. Um, and I guess you're on LinkedIn and all sorts of things like that. So what might be the best way to, to get in contact? So, um, yeah, we've, we've obviously got the website. So um, www.petorum solutions, P E T A U R U M solutions.co.uk or petorum local.co.uk. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn and find all, all the links from there. Um, you can email me adam at petorumsolutions.co.uk or, um, or give me a ring. The numbers uh, are on the website and on my LinkedIn profile. Um, so yeah, please, uh, you know, always happy to chat, always um, happy to meet for a coffee, may have to be a virtual coffee these days um, until we're allowed out again. Um, but yeah, you know, um, really enjoy, you know, kind of, chatting and you know if somebody wants to uh, you know just pick up the phone and ask a couple of questions that that offers always open mark so good okay thank you very much okay so i'll post all those links in the in a comment on the bottom of the video anyway for everybody so you can you can click and oh, so, 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 so i didn't have to spell it technology no <laughs> no you didn't have to spell it that's okay um, anyway thank you for uh, joining me today uh, everybody and thank special thanks to adam for for sharing his insights into um, into local HR and project HR. Um, uh, if you'd like to join me in conversation yourself, please do drop me a line. Um, I wish you fantastic success in the week ahead and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much, Adam. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye.